So hello and welcome back again to Junkyard Summit. Today we're taking a look at a couple of Radeon software features that you might have overlooked or missed. I'll be doing this in a 2 or 3 part mini series so I can keep each video shorter. For our part 1, I'll be discussing both Radeon image sharpening as well as Radeon Boost. These two features were first introduced in last year's Adrenaline Driver when the RX 5700 XT was first launched. And with that out of the way, let us first roll the intro. Radeon Image Sharpening or RIS for short is a new feature from AMD that sharpens the image quality of a game without any performance loss. The processing is done on a driver level so theoretically you can do this on any game as long as your video card supports it. RIS supports all Radeon 5000 series cards, Vega series cards as well as Polaris cards except for the RX 560, 460, and 550. Ryzen APUs are also supported while mobile variants are not included. As for API support, RIS can be used in DX11, DX12, and as well as Vulkan game titles. DX9 games are also supported but it is currently limited to Navi cards. Enabling RIS is easy. Just go to the settings of the Radeon software, go to the graphics tab, then just toggle the Radeon image sharpening option. Per game basis is also supported. Just click the game that you want RIS to be applied on and turn it on from there. Once we enable the RIS, there would be a second slider option that can be toggled between 10 to 100%. This percentage is the amount of sharpness that is going to be applied to our game. And if you are going to ask me what is the sweet spot for the amount of sharpness, I'd suggest starting at 50% and just slide it further until you reach the desired sharpness. But before I go to my observation, let us first take a quick look of RIS in action from 720p to 4K using my PowerColor RX 5500 XT 8 gb video card. For this testing, I went with Rainbow Six Siege on Ultra Preset with 100% Temporal AA and based from the result, at 720p full screen mode, we can see that the blurred lines were severely reduced with our 100% sharpness. While at 1080p, we can see the characters at the far end of the screen get a bit more defined for its outline as compared to no sharpening. And comparing 50% to 100%, I like the post process on the 50% more as like in the 720p testing, at 100% some of the textures are turning into a sort of cell shaded look which changes the overall graphical feel in my opinion. For 4K, I tried comparing ultra preset without RIS and medium preset with 50% RIS. Besides being less detailed in some texture, the 50% sharpness provided extra details to close the graphical gap between the two. And since we toned down the graphical preset from ultra to medium, our average FPS went from 41 FPS up to 53 FPS. That is a close to 30% gain for our average FPS. So the question now is, where do we see this feature helpful? The answer is that this is great on more graphical demanding games that requires you to tone down the resolution but at the same time you don't want to suffer the blurriness that comes with lowering the resolution. It is also good for those games wherein you are forced to lower the graphical settings and instead use RIS to give more detail on your game without FPS compromises. Another good instance on using RIS is when it is paired on certain anti-aliasing settings to give the smoother edge a sharper look. And the cherry on top for this feature is it literally doesn't cost any frame penalty and you can turn it on on any game that you want. Going to our next feature now which is the Radeon Boost. According to AMD, Radeon Boost delivers that extra bit of performance 
when fast on-screen character motion is detected via mouse input. It dynamically lowers the resolution of the entire frame to allow for higher FPS with little perceived impact to quality. AMD's explanation is kinda straightforward already, but for those that still needs an extra explanation for this one, technically, Radeon Boost will lower the frame when you move or flick your mouse, which in turn will boost your FPS slightly instead of decreasing it on a normal setup. Enabling this is the same with RIS, and the slider now only consists of three options, 83.3%, 66.6%, and 50%. This percentage means that the max down sampling of these frames will be based on that. Scaling will also be in steps according to your mouse movement. If you set it at 50%, it will first do an 83% scaling on a small mouse movement and will progress to 66% and finally to 50% depending on how fast your mouse moves. This can be easily tracked by checking the upper left section of the monitor wherein each square represents a certain step. So one square means 100%, 2 means 83.3% and so on. According to AMD, Radeon Boost GPU support includes RX 400 GPUs and newer as well as Ryzen APUs. Meaning this time around your RX 460 or 560 and RX 550 will also benefit from it. But the difference for its support as compared to RIS is that Radeon Boost only runs on specific games as well as this only supports DX11 modes of those said games. There are 8 games in total and for today's testing, I'll be looking more closely on PUBG, GTA 5, and Borderlands 3. And with that, let us first check some of the gaming results. So in PUBG, I tested this on the max graphical preset at 4K and at 4 different scenarios. One with Radeon Boost Off, one with a minimum of 83% rescale, one at 66.6, and lastly at 50% rescale. As we can see with the Boost Off, PUBG didn't even hit the 30fps target and overall experience is sluggish. At 83% which is around 1800p, we are now touching the 30fps territory and downscaling is barely visible at this setup. At 66.6% .6 or 1440p downscaling, PUBG now hits high 30s when we are moving our mouse but dips back all the way to the usual high 20s once we stop moving our mouse. And if you will observe our game footage, this is more evident when we are scoping. But then again, with our fast mouse movement, downscaling is barely noticeable at this rate. At 1080p 50% scale, the game now even reaches as high as 50fps, but now I am seeing some rough edges within the hair since our character doesn't move much as compared with the game's surrounding. But still, overall at 4K, the downsampling are really hard to notice unless you really try to observe the difference. But in this game, I realized that using Radeon Boost on games under 30fps is generally not a good idea as the gaming experience is really ruined by the sudden changes from smooth movements provided by the Radeon Boost to the actual under 30fps laggy frames. Next up is GTA 5. This time around, I tested this on a 1080p resolution, so meaning that we are only getting a 540p resolution on its 50% scaling. In this setup, Though not that visible in the video, the scaling is very noticeable and the increase in FPS is minimal. At this resolution, my only suggestion as much as possible is to stick at 66.6% .6 for a 720p scaling to get that FPS boost without too much of a sacrifice on its visual fidelity. I also noticed that sometimes text gets jagged when Radeon Boost is activated and it doesn't happen to all of the games listed but GTA 5 is one of those games that suffers from this problem. The last game for today's testing is going to be Borderlands 3. For this game, I tested the actual average FPS gains using its scanned benchmark. Testing here involves doing a 40cm mouse movement every 5 seconds. Tests were done both in 1080p and 4K. Just like in my GTA 5 testing, frames increased in 1080p are small here in Borderlands 3. We are just seeing at most a close to 5% difference margin between boost off and 50% boost. But at 4K, things are completely different. We are now seeing a 12% increase from boost off to 50% boost. And just like in PUBG, visual difference is hard to notice especially if you are gaming on a smaller monitor 
like on a 24 or 27 inch 4K display. Personally, I'm running Arias at my main gaming rig at 80% sharpness as I enjoy the extra detail that the sharpness is giving me. As for Radeon Boost, it is currently disabled in my main rig as my Vega 56 can still run most of those included titles fairly easy. But if your GPU is struggling to get a 30 or 60 FPS, then you might want to check the Radeon Boost especially on those single player games. Users with 4K monitors will also benefit more as compared to those who are still running their 1080p monitors. So that's it for part 1. If you have any questions or inquiries, feel free to comment it down below. And also if you find this video helpful, a like to this video is deeply appreciated and do subscribe to my channel as part 2 is on its way already. Once again, this is Brain of Junkyard Summit. Thank you, stay safe, and see you in the next one.